So what's the actual purpose of life? I'm on my farm. Winter time, horses are uh, enjoying not doing any work. Eh? How you been, girl? What's the actual purpose of life? It's interesting. Um, you can ask this question to a lot of people, and you get a lot of answers. And uh, got some little portable chicken pens there. Um, an interesting question. And Sigmund Freud, in, in his book, Civilization is Discontent, probably the greatest book nobody knows about. If you ask, people always ask me, Ty, what's like a book that, you know, is a game changer? I'm like, Civilization is Discontent. One of the, the second chapter, he basically says, you know, what is the purpose of life? He said, this is a question that's been asked without end by millions of people, by great philosophers. And he said, and uh, it seems... Nobody has an answer. They say maybe that's because there is no answer. But he says, as to the behavior of men and women, we can ascertain that they seek pleasure and avoid pain, or simply they seek happiness. But I, I give a more nuanced answer. Um, a little sacrifice lot, we call it, in the winter time, so the horses can be out. Uh, you got to rotate those around every year. So I'm going to give you a different answer, though. I've thought a lot about this. I would say the purpose of life is love, but not Hollywood love. Not what everybody talks about. When I, when I, I hate to even say the word love. So actually, what if I said the word social life? The purpose, and I'm not talking about what the purpose of life is after death. That's not something I know much about. <laughs> but as to the purpose of life on earth... I'd say it's social slash love. So in my 67 steps, you know, it's divided four categories, the four pillars, health, wealth, love, happiness. Love, the third pillar, breaks into three subsets. So those three subsets are friends, family, romance. I would say, as a practical matter, the purpose of life is friends, family, romance, which you can call that love or you can call that social. You know, there's three types of love in like old... Greek or Latin, you know, there's agape, eros, and phileo, and like agape is like family love, unconditional love you have for your kids, or, oh, I've got some more horses, they want to come see these horses, how you doing, huh, they got their winter coat, they're kind of shaggy right now, this is my Amish homestead farm, when I was younger, I lived with the Amish for two and a half years. I wasn't Amish, but I lived with them in their homes and farm. And I have a farm in the middle of an Amish community. So, in fact, some of the Amish are keep boarding their horses here this winter. Anyway, so I will say the purpose of life on earth, a simpler version, is social or love. Agape, phileo, and eros. So that's friends, family, romance. Agape is like the family love, unconditional love. Phileo is like the friendship love. My friend Zach tragically just died. Uh, you know, been close friends. It's like insane. It's still kind of a blur. Like I go to text him something funny, you know. You've seen him on my social, funny. Always been a comedian, even when we were, we were teenagers. But I had phileo type love for him as a friend, you know? It's like the saying, there's no greater love than you lay down your life. I lay down my life, I think, for some of my friends, like Zach, you know? And then you have eros. That's where the word erotic comes from. That's romance. That's sexual love. That's what makes the world go around. So to me, the reason you make money, the reason you stay in shape physically, even the reason you seek happiness. See, I, I would slightly disagree with Sigmund Freud, if I, if I may, even though I consider him such an underrated person. So many people in the modern world are like, oh, Sigmund Freud, didn't he, you know, the id, the super ego, hasn't this guy's methodologies and hypotheses been disproven? I'm like, yeah, that was in, you know, late 1800s, early 1900s. The man, there, <laughs> I don't know if I've ever read anyone at some level, more genius than what he wrote. The simplicity of that he laid out, super complex 
subjects. But if you think about this, okay, happiness, he said, it seems by the behavior, behavior of humans that we seek happiness. We may seek it, but it doesn't mean it's the purpose. Happiness is the fuel that allows you to get out of bed, but ultimately humans are social creatures. There's a great book by Matt Lieberman, former Harvard, now he's at UCLA, neuroscientist. And he has all this advanced research he's done with fMRI machines where you study the brain, brain function. It's all social. It's all social. We dream about social situations. Our fears are social. Our ambitions are social. Our, our appetites are rooted in social. <laughs> Here come the big horses. You can hear them thundering. Some big Belgian. You guys having fun out there? They got the time of their life. <laughs> this farm's a good farm for work. They have a good life here. Um, so everything, if you read that book, Social, by Matt Lieberman. By the way, I'll put some show notes and some links to this quick you know, little podcast. So tylopez.com slash podcast 322. 23. If you go to that link, tylopez.com slash podcast 32323. Uh, sorry, 32223, today's date. Um, you can grab links and I'll put some references that I talk about here in the in that blog notes, show notes. So the purpose of life at an fMRI level, functional magnetic resonance imaging machine. When you study the brain, no matter what people say, the, the, the scans don't lie. We think in social terms. We live in social terms. The great billionaire, what was his name? Anastate, the Greek billionaire who married JFK's widow. You know, he said, all the money in the world. It doesn't matter if there wasn't women. <laughs> that was his take on it. But if you read deeper, that was a social, he was saying that at, at a core level, the other pillars of the good life, health, wealth, and happiness, they exist to support your movement towards a better social life. So, you know, <clears throat> today's episode, I try to, on my podcast and my vlogs, I try to talk about, you know, Monday I talk about health, Tuesday I talk about wealth, today's Wednesday I talk about love, social, so that's why I'm on this subject. But purpose of life for you is to do the things that support an insanely fulfilling social life on all three of those social subtenants, you know, foundations. So the four pillars break into three each and those are the 12 foundations. So the three foundations of love are friends, family, and romance. So you, it's simple, you ask yourself, are you surrounded by close friends, loyal friends? People would take a bullet for you, you'd take a bullet for them. If not, get your ass in gear. Because if you don't have that, all the money in the world doesn't matter. All the muscles in the world, if you're a, you know, a gym rat, doesn't matter. Even being happy, being happy alone in a cave. And I know some people will disagree with me and people are very esoteric, you know, hyper, quote unquote, spiritual. I'm not trying to knock anybody, but I don't buy it. I don't buy it, you know. You ain't, you're not living, well... Matt Lieberman's proven. The fMRI machines don't lie. You can't change your DNA. Not significantly. I mean, you can change some minor things, but you can't grow gills. You can't grow wings. You're locked in. There's a biological imperative. And so you can't be happy alone. People say, oh, you should. Like, I'm so, I'm a very counterculture person. I'm, I'm contrarian through and through. Like people are like, you, before you find love, you have to love yourself alone. I'm like, <laughs> what a joke. What a, how about this? It appears to be true, but at closer examination, it fails the test of truth. And you might say, what is truth? Well, you really think people, you really think that's the solution? I mean, go to your great, your ancestors, go 10,000 generations back. You found happiness in the tribe. Now, you may take times, like the Sioux Indians would take times where they did a spiritual quest, you know, where they go off for three to five days and they fast and don't drink water and stare into the sun to find, they called the vision quest. That's fine, but they returned to the tribe. There was no prolonged, I'm going to live in a, 
you know, in a cave on top of a mountain in Nepal. No offense to people who do that. There may be people who that's their life quest, but the vast majority of us, you will find your life